Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Bosses Only, the video series where we look at just the bosses from a dungeon. You're not stuck on trash, you're stuck on bosses. From the Flames of Ambition DLC, this is Black Drake Villa. And the first boss in here is a secret boss. You're gonna find a button here, there's another one over here, there's one down here, and one here. One of each group member needs to stand on a button, and that'll open this door, which uh, doesn't look like it's open, but trust me, it actually is. So once it's open, jump down here to get to that first secret boss. I'm just going to speed the video up here because uh, you're walking down a tunnel. So you hit this button and boss number one, the Avatar of Zeal, will spawn. He's an Indric reindeer looking thing. Tank taunt him, turn him away from the group. This guy's got uh, the usual teleporting around stuff that Indrics do. Make sure none of the group members are between the tank and the boss. Or they might get hit by something. He's got this uh, laser beam that he shoots out of his head. He throws ghost reindeers at you and he teleports around. That's basically it. He's mostly a stack and burn. Tank, just keep him turned away from everybody. Everybody else shoot him in the bum. Follow him when he teleports and continue shooting him in the bum until he dies. Tank, the boss is also going to put a debuff on you. It's a sort of cold, smoky effect thing. Healer can keep you alive. You can block. It's not too terrible. When he dies, these little wisps are going to pop out. Collect as many of these as you can. You're going to need them. And now let's head through this portal to the first proper boss. And of course, let's turn on the hard mode to uh, make it harder. This is Kinra's Iron Eye. He's a hulking, bulking, beefy, burly man cake of a minotaur and he hurts a lot. So, starting off, Tank, taunt him, turn him away from the group. He's going to smack you, and every time he smacks you, he leaves a persistent circle of flame. You can stack these, but don't stand in them too long. They really hurt. He likes to throw this thing out. You need to go kill it as quickly as possible because it machine guns fireballs all over the place, and it's really easy to just kill it real quick, and then you don't have to worry about it. Also, kill these salamanders. Notice the aura of flame around them. Do not let them get anywhere near the boss, because if that aura overlaps him, he'll get even burlier, be harder to kill, and he'll hit harder so don't let the salamanders near him they are absolute priority one even more important than the boss as in leave the tank out to dry and go kill those salamanders don't let them get near him because as hard as this fight is on the tank it is going to be a hundred times harder if those salamanders get to the boss and buff him your tank will die is what i'm saying don't let them anywhere near him i cannot overemphasize it enough the salamanders are critical to kill now that first secret boss that you killed, the Avatar of Zeal, also gave you a special buff. You can sort of see up there in the top right corner. The tank just stood on that pad and synergized, which turns him into a great big sentinel of ice beefcake with a whiteout synergy, which when you use it, freezes the boss and all the ads and everything else in the room, giving you precious extra seconds to just beat up the boss for free without having to worry about taking damage. A well-coordinated group can take turns using the freeze to pretty much ignore most of the fight. Now, when the boss has lost about a quarter of his health, he throws his weapon across the room. When this happens, there's jets of flame coming out of those vents the salamanders come from and these little horrible circles that travel across the floor they change direction at random and sort of appear to be chasing you you don't want them passing through you because they hurt pretty much avoid them at all costs now I'm going to tell you about a mechanic for the tank to deal with that only happens on the hard mode. He'll do a hard hit on the floor. You just saw those little fireballs coming out. It's a volcano that'll radiate out and damage everybody unless the tank stands in it to absorb all the damage. You've seen that mechanic if you've done the fight against Galchabar in Bloodroot Forge. It's exactly the same tank, just stand in the volcano. Another hard mode only mechanic is the boss likes to do the thing where he chains you to the floor and somebody will have to bash to interrupt him and you need to move away from where you were chained because there's going to be a dot on you if you don't get away from the small expanding fire circle. So that also happens but only on hard mode in this fight we didn't get to see it. Now if you're in the ice statue form and you collect a wisp it'll spawn a little ice man to run around and help you so we're just going to have a look at those real quick because uh, if the boss was still alive and we had done that, those would have been shooting at the boss and helping. It's not a whole lot of damage, but it is a little extra thing. If you synergize the ice statue and grab wisps, you'll get these little pets to help you out in the fight. But with him dead, we could loot our lockpicks, grab any remaining wisps in the room, and head through the door to the next secret boss. Once you're in this room and you've killed all the ads, run up here with another player and pull the lever at the same time. Then run up here and there are two buttons, one here, one over there. When you step on them, this testicle will appear. Go and grab it. And we're going to take it back downstairs. You've got this mirrored on both sides of the room. So two players go up each side, pull the lever simultaneously, grab that testicle, put it in the bowl, and this hole in the floor will open up and we'll just speed up the video because, well, we're just walking down a tunnel. We'll run to the end of it. 
where there's another little button to press. Press that and the next boss will appear, the avatar of enormous breasts. And as lovely as she is, she's only capable of turning a couple of tricks. One of them is a great big heavy smack, which the tank should be the only one receiving, so just block that as normal. The other thing, Nereid poo fountains. You've seen this mechanic with Nereids before. She drops down to the ground, some circles expand, step away, and here's some poo fountains. That's all she does. Shoot her in the bum until she dies, loot your lockpicks and manganese, grab any wisps, and take the portal to the next secret boss. We're going to speed the video up for this one. There's two levers on either side of the door. Pull them, the door will open, head up to each side, and somebody steps on the button, and on the wall at the other end, there's like a D-pad made up of four buttons. It's just like the D-pad on your Xbox controller. Use them to move the statues, which will open that door, which lets you get that testicle, put it in the bowl, the door opens, and then we'll run down this tunnel to press the button which will spawn the next boss, the Avatar of Fortitude, who is one of those big beefy iceberg men. And he doesn't do too much. He's got a big heavy attack. Again, the tank just needs to be blocking that. The real bad thing is he'll be channeling and he'll bend over backwards and you'll see like ice balls coming out of him. They really bloody hurt. This cannot be interrupted. When he bends over backwards to shoot them, a couple of dodge rolls will prevent you from getting hit and taking any damage and then continue shooting him until he dies. It's that straightforward with these secret guys. Grab your wisps. You're going to need as many of these as you can. All of them, in fact, if you're going to do the final secret boss on the hard mode, that's 30 per player. If you're not doing the hard modes, you'll only face the final secret boss on his regular veteran difficulty, in which case you'll only need 25 per player. So in any case, grab all the wisps you can. Now, let's head through this door to the second proper boss of the dungeon, Captain Geminus. Uh, she is quite awful. Anyway, let's turn on the hard mode. And make it even harder. Because, of course, let's make it harder. So, Captain Geminus, there is a lot going on in this fight, but again, if you've done the first secret boss, the Avatar of Zeal, you get this pad which you can synergize to transform into an ice beef cake and then use the whiteout synergy to freeze the boss, giving you a little bit of free time to do some damage without getting hurt. Captain Geminus likes to teleport around. She teleport strikes at you. She'll throw things at you from a distance and hit you up close. She throws out beast traps. Try not to step in those because you'll be rooted and you'll take some dot damage. After you've damaged her a good bit, she'll go to the center of the room and cover herself with a shield. You can't damage her during this phase and you'll see all these fire circles radiating out. Try not to get hit by them. She's going to spawn an air Atronach. Tank needs to taunt that right away. You see these electric lasers coming out. You don't want that going on anyone other than the tank, ideally. So kill this guy as quickly as you can and try to avoid those fire circles. She's also going to summon some flaming wolves, so make sure you take those out as quickly as possible. The ice beefcake synergy can help with that. And these blue bow and arrow guys, if you see a circle under your feet starting to grow, once that fills, one of these bow and arrow guys is going to shoot you and it's going to hurt like hell. Watch this gigantic cone attack that the boss does. Try not to have that pointed at the group because it'll hit all of them. Now, this mark that the boss puts, she targets a random player to mark them and it sort of jumps from player to player. Whoever is marked at any given time will have their resistances lowered and will take more damage. So the healer will need to focus on whoever's marked, call it out to your healer if you need to and avoid damage as much as possible. Especially from the blue guys, that will almost definitely kill you if you're marked and you get hit. So again, you see that filling up circle? Kill the blue guy before he shoots you. During the boss's second invulnerability phase, she will spawn two of these air atronachs. So again, tank, taunt them as quick as you can so that the uh, electric lasers are only on you. And once again, that targeted salvo mechanic, if it fills all the way, make sure you dodge roll, otherwise you'll be hit. And if you're marked, like uh, we are now, that would be a one shot if that hits you. Very important to kill those archers. I'd honestly say that the archers are more important than the boss itself, much like in the uh, previous boss fight with Kinra, where it was more important to kill the salamanders. Uh, the tank can take it and the healer could focus on the tank, so just worry about keeping the archer number as low as possible because she spawns them all around the room. Again, if you use the ice synergy to freeze her, you could also collect these wisps and they'll turn into little pets which can help you out. You've seen a few running around during this fight. Dodge another targeted salvo. We've almost got her now. Again, focus on those archers. Get them out of the way. Dodge the cone attack from the boss. That comes as two. There's a smaller one and then a bigger one. Make sure it's not pointed at the group. And with that, the boss is dead. Loot your lockpicks and your manganese. Grab any other wisps that are in the room. Remember, you're going to need 30 per player for hard mode. And we'll head through to the final boss. Pyroturgian Kratis. And again, let's switch on the hard mode to make it harder. 
And actually, let's speed up the video a little bit here, since it appears the group is just standing around talking strats. But in any case, once we get underway, the tank will need to taunt him, turn him away from the group, and he's got a whole bunch of weird karate moves and kicks and jumping around that he likes to do. He throws fire all over the place. He will summon those untauntable fire ghosts. He also has a move where he throws those uh, salamanders out, so you want to watch out for that as well. This is it right here, so watch out for the trails of flame and the salamander that chases you around, don't get hit by it. Kill everything as quick as you can, focus back on the boss. When he does this great big fire tornado thing, stay outside of it and shoot him. This is also when he summons those fire ghosts that can't be taunted by the tank, just kill those. It's also possible to instantly blow them up with the whiteout synergy from the ice beefcake thing, but you really don't want to use that until later in the fight, you'll see why very soon grab any wisps that are in the room. Now, when the entire room fills with flame like this, right near the boss, there's going to be a little hollow safe space that you can get in. He's also going to summon one of these great big fire beefcakes. So, Tank, make sure you're taunting him too. He's got a big heavy attack and a thing that makes a fireball rain down. So just be careful. Kill him as quickly as you can. And don't get too close to those flaming head statues on either side of the room. After you've damaged him a bit, he's going to run over here, blow this wall up, and he's going to run through to a secret hidden room at the back. So you'll need to chase him. Tank, make sure you've re-upped your taunt before we head this way. Now, all the same mechanics that you've dealt with from the boss outside are also going to apply in this room. But now that you're back here, it's okay to go on that pad, synergize for the ice beefcake thing, and simply freeze him. This will give you a bunch of chances to do extra damage, especially if you coordinate with your group and take turns synergizing and freezing him. Now, when the boss jumps across to the other side of the room like this, the entire upper ledge is going to be covered in fire, but that safe hollow area will be right up next to the boss, so everyone will need to jump down into the center, run across, and use one of those geysers to get blasted up into the safe space. Remember to simply point your reticle where you want to go, and that's where you will be blasted to. He summons another fire beefcake, kill that as quickly as possible, and again, we've got the streaking fire, the AoE, you'll need to get out of that, but again, don't touch the flame coming out of those dragon heads because it will kill you really quickly. Find a little safe corner, get away from the fire, and keep attacking the boss. If you can use the freezing synergy on him, do it. And before you know it, he will be defeated. And you'll be able to loot your Pyroturgic Kratos mask and all your other rubbish and lockpicks and stuff, which is super dank. However, we aren't done just yet. Make sure you've been collecting every wisp you see through the entire place. Here's another one. And then head up through this gate to this little area and synergize with it. All the wisps that you've eaten throughout the entire dungeon will be taken away and testicles will appear in each bowl. Once every player has deposited every wisp, a final, super secret, extra hardcore beefcake of a boss will appear. And you will only get five chances to fight this guy. If you fail and wipe five times, he'll tell you you're not worthy, and he'll leave. Now, I must warn you, this boss is unbelievably brutal on the tank. He's got a move where you only get a split second to react. You'll see him sort of swing his sword and jump at you. It's very, very brief. It's literally about a half second. You can either dodge roll, or you can have an unbelievably horrific damage over time effect on you that will shred your health in the blink of an eye. If you've got a healer, he is going to have to heal the ever-living crap out of you. If you haven't got a healer, you cannot afford to miss a single dodge roll. There's no way you're going to be able to outheal that for yourself. So tank, keep that in mind at all times, and try your best not to miss a single dodge roll. Now, these little banekins come up and shoot little ice balls at you. They're not too terrible, but you want to kill them if you can. Now, do you remember those secret bosses? Yep, the Avatar of Zeal is back. You're going to have to deal with all three secret bosses, one after another in this fight, with all of their mechanics, which includes the Ghost Reindeers, the laser beam from his head, and all the teleporting around tank. I know it's tough, but try to taunt him too, because that head laser will really mess up the group. Now, watch out for those uh, traveling ice circles that the boss sends out. And this fancy feet mechanic, the boss stabs his sword into the ground, and little ice spike things come up all over the place. So watch out for those, dodge around, and get that Indrik killed. Get back on the boss. Oops, we've had a whoopsie. Let's see if we can get a res. That guy already has a trifecta in here, so I'm sure he's not bothered. And we've got the first secret boss out of the way, but that means that the Avatar of Enormous Breast is going to pop up very soon. Again, watch out for the traveling ice circles that radiate out from the boss. You don't want anybody getting hit from those. The tank really needs to be keeping the boss turned away from the group at all times if possible. 
trimming, we like to call this mechanic. The whole room will slowly fill up and then there'll be an ice explosion. You can go to the very edge of the room where it's safe. However, there are ice tornadoes going around the edge. You'll want to be in between them and traveling in the same direction so that you don't get hit. If one of those hits you, you'll get yeeted back into the center. You don't want that to happen right as the ice explosion occurs because you will, of course, die, which you want to avoid. Oh, we had another whoopsie, but that's fine. We'll just get a res. Again, keep your eye on the boss. If you see him stab his sword into the floor, there's going to be ice spikes to dodge. If you have a huge circle like that spreading out around you, move away from the rest of the group because an ice comet's going to come down and it is really, really painful. Keep your focus on the boss and eventually he is going to spawn the second secret boss, the avatar of Enormous Breasts. I just like saying Enormous Breasts. Here she is. So, once she arrives again, Tank, I know it's tough, but try to keep her taunted too, because she'll mess the group up. She's going to do the poo fountains, you don't want to end up in those, and it can happen at any time and overlap with the mechanics from the boss, like you're seeing here with all the ice spikes, and we've also got the poo fountains. It's a lot to deal with. Again, get away from the group when you've got this telegraph on you, because it means a big, heavy ice comet's going to come down, rimming once again, so get to the edge of the room and travel in the same direction as the tornadoes. Don't touch the tornadoes, or you'll be thrown back into the center, where you will, of course, be blown up. Focus down that avatar of enormous breasts until she dies, and then you can get back on the boss. Again, Tank, don't ever forget, you can't miss a dodge roll. You need to keep your eyes on that boss, and as soon as you see him jump, you need to be dodging, or you're going to have the mother of all dots on you. It will kill you in no time flat. It is very easy for accidents to happen in this fight. And he's got his sword stabbed into the ground and there are little ice explosions all over the place. Fancy feet around and dodge them. Keep your focus on the boss. Three people with the ice comet telegraph spread out. Let it come down. Don't let anybody get hit. Overlapping damage will kill you. And again, focus on those little banekins when they pop up because they're very irritating. Just get them killed as quickly as possible. Don't let them run around throwing their little ice balls at you. And once you get the boss down to roughly a third of his health, the final of the three secret bosses is going to spawn the Avatar of Icebergliness, or whatever he's called. This bloke, remember him? We're going to have to fight him again as well as the boss. And again, we're going to have the situation with mechanics overlapping. So... Remember, this big channel cannot be interrupted, spread out when the Ice Comet happens. Dodge roll when he throws out these balls and you see they miss you and you don't take any damage. Rimming again, so get to the edge, follow the tornadoes, don't touch the tornadoes, wait until the explosion happens, get back on this bloke. Shoot him right in the willy that's made of ice. Doing the channel again, so again, remember, it cannot be interrupted. He bends over backwards and he shoots out these ice balls. They do a massive amount of damage if they hit you, but they can be dodge rolled. Healer, just make sure you're protecting the group during this phase. And once you're done with him, we can finally finish the boss off. And things are going to take a little bit of a turn towards the end here. Once we get the boss down to about a quarter health, the room is going to start shrinking. Not literally, but this. This great big AoE around the edge will happen. Going in that is going to get you killed. It's all full of ice tornadoes and pain. And over time, as you damage the boss, it's going to get bigger, which means the safe area to stand in is going to get smaller. And we're still going to have the Banekins. We're still going to have the radiating ice circles. We're still going to have the boss stabbing the floor and those little explosions of ice coming out all over the place. We're still going to have that god awful dot that the boss can do. Tank, you really can't afford to miss a dodge roll here. Do as much damage as you can to the boss because the room keeps shrinking until it's absolutely tiny. Watch out for all the little ice circles. Almost got him now. Just remember, use every little bit of available space that's safe to stand in because you don't have a whole lot of it and you're still going to need to spread out when these ice comets come down. Because again, the overlapping damage will absolutely destroy you. And with him dead, your reward, if you do this on the hard mode, is three extra little chests which contain dungeon loot and other junk that you can loot. Uh, you get two of these chests if you do it on this regular veteran difficulty without the hard modes, and you get one if you do it on normal, but because we did the hard modes, we get three of these chests, and there's a chance to get the tool, the Relic of the Sentinel, which if you use it inside a Black Drake Villa, will show you hidden chests all around the place. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. The video is over. Uh, you can go if you want, or you can like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss a video. You can also catch up with Cat over on X, see the latest goings on. You can head over to Instagram to look at pictures and stuff. 
Uh, you can you, you roll it here on YouTube. I really don't know why I leave that one on here. And don't forget to check out the stream at twitch.tv forward slash And we'll see you next time on Bosses Only.